Hi guys, welcome back again. I'm so excited to be back again this Friday and um, you know, thank you so much for all the uh, feedback and um, you know, just um, the whole thing was just received really well and I'm just so excited and so encouraged by um, all of you guys, your comments and everything. So we're back, so thank you so much and I um, hope you had a really good week. Did anyone see the royal wedding? Can we talk about the royal wedding? <laughs> Did you watch it? Oh my gosh, I'll just tell you. Um, so I woke up at, actually, I went to bed at 5 a.m. Don't ask me why. And then I woke up, um, I set my alarm for 9 a.m. And then I woke up at 9 a.m. And yeah, I was just watching the guests coming in, you know, the day dresses were just amazing. How amazing were the outfits? I particularly liked, I think she's the niece of the late Princess Diana. I really liked her outfit. It was, what was the designer? Um, uh, forgot who, I think it's, um, I think it's Dolce and Gabbana. I think it's Dolce and Gabbana. Yes, it was Dolce and Gabbana. It was like a green dress and it had like floral uh, patterns on the textile bit of it. Oh, it was so beautiful and the hat. It was just amazing. And I did like um, George Cooley's wife's outfit, the yellow outfit, uh, the dress. Yeah, that was just beautiful. Let me know in the comment section which uh, dresses you guys liked, which day dresses you guys liked. Um, so yeah, and then you guys, I cried. I cried. I actually cried. <laughs> Normally, if you know me, I don't really cry. I barely cry unless like I'm in prayer or like I am praising the Lord. Like I'm actually not one of those very emotional people in general. So Megan comes. Uh, what do you guys think of the dress? Please let me know in the comment section below. I loved the dress. It's a simple dress, but it was really elegant, just beautiful. As she was walking down, I was just stretching my hand, praying, uh, you know, for her. And um, <laughs> and all of a sudden, tears just began rolling down my eyes. I'm thinking, Daphne, why are you crying? <laughs> And so tears just began rolling down and um, I think when she got to pr uh, Prince Charles when he was walking her down like I was just like tears like rolling down and just crying it was just such a beautiful thing and you can really see that this is just the grace of God over her life she is chosen to be there and I was just so overwhelmed by just the goodness of God and just you know the things that God can do you know the people that God chooses and you know people think you have to be perfect to be somewhere else but it doesn't always work that way you see sometimes it's not about what you're doing but it's just about God choosing you uh, for a specific person and God choosing you in a specific generation for a purpose so sometimes it's just all about purpose it's not about what you're doing um, so I was just really overwhelmed and just so happy and just so joyful I'm just really happy for her I'm just so happy for uh, everybody and um, I'm just so excited to see you know what God is gonna do in their lives Actually, the day before their wedding, I actually had a dream about them that God showed me uh, what he wants to do with them. So I'm just so excited because I've been praying for them uh, for uh, for a while since March. So anyway, I don't want to keep talking about the royal wedding. So anyway, let's get straight into this. Um, yeah, I hope you had a good week. Let me know how your week went. Anyway, uh, so today we want to look into this. Some of you maybe are in a relationship, you are maybe engaged, you're courting, you're dating, and you feel pressured by your boyfriend or your fiance, or I don't know, maybe he's your friend. You feel pressured to sleep with him or he's pressuring you to sleep with him. Um, you know, I get a lot of these emails and a lot of these messages. Women don't know what to do. This guy, they love him. and But then he's asking for something that they know they shouldn't be giving before marriage. Um, you know, as a Christian, you know that sex before marriage is a sin. It's fornication in the Bible. So this guy is maybe pressuring you to sleep with him. So maybe he's making hints um, indirectly or he's actually telling you directly that he wants to sleep with you as a way to maybe advance the relationship maybe that's what he's saying the first thing you need to know is to know why why does he want to sleep with you what is the reason behind that what is the mindset behind that um, most of the times i'll say 90 percent of the time maybe you have asked him if you haven't yet asked him please do ask him why he wants to sleep with you most of the times the reason that you get is because i love you 
because I love you. Sometimes it can be very difficult. I mean, you love this guy and maybe you have your future planned and maybe you're thinking, we're gonna get married anyway, we might as well. Or, you know, we can just repent after. But um, the thing with sex is that once you have sex with somebody, um, in the spirit realm there are things that happen so even though you do repent after there is um, a deliverance that needs to take place after so you can repent and God can forgive you of your sin and some of you think well I can just repent and I you know God will forgive me of my sins yes but there's also somebody who we call the devil and the devil is not gonna sit around and wait for you and just be you know singing a lullaby on the side of the corner while you guys are fornicating no the enemy is gonna come immediately as soon as you start fornicating and put you in bondage in the sense that he takes charge over your body this is why sometimes um, some people experience um, strange dreams or people sleeping with them and they can't stop this person or they can't stop this thing that is sleeping with them in their sleep this is because the Bible says that the body belongs to the wife the husband's body belongs to the wife and the wife's body belongs to the husband this is because sex makes you one with the person and because you're not married and because it is fornication the enemy puts you in that bondage whereby he takes charge over over your body and this is why sometimes you can't wake up um, when these things are happening when you're sleeping so this is what happens so yes you can say we will repent or we're gonna get married anyway but there's what we call baggage and that's what there's what we call bondage so that bondage and that baggage is what you need to be delivered from after you repent after you're forgiven there also needs to be a deliverance and sometimes that deliverance can take years so it's very important that we understand what happens in the spirit world when we do certain things because yes you can repent Jesus has forgiven you of your sins you can tap into that forgiveness but there's also a bondage that you need to be delivered from um, if you're experiencing what I've been saying um, there's a video that I did for deliverance for soul ties I'll put that in the description box for you so it's just best to stick to the Word of God and to honor the Word of God concerning um, sex before marriage so um, I don't know if I went overboard or over rail with that one but anyway um, so he might say you know because he loves you but um he you know it's not really true it's not the truth um, Love is kind. Love is patient. Love does not seek its own. It doesn't behave rudely. It does not rejoice in iniquity. Iniquity is fornication. Iniquity in the sense that sex before marriage is a sin. So real love does not rejoice in that. Love delights in the truth. And the truth is sex is for marriage. This is the truth. I mean, if you're a Christian watching this video, that's the truth. Sex before marriage is fornication. Sex before marriage is a sin. So if the guy say he loves you that is actually not true because real love real love does not delight in fornication it doesn't delight in sleeping with somebody before marriage it doesn't delight in pressuring somebody to do something that they don't want to do and sometimes it's not even about what God is saying in his word sometimes you you yourself you just don't want to do that you don't want to do that you're not ready to do that so sometimes it's not even about the faith it's not even about religion or anything like that it's just a personal choice that you have because i've spoken to people who don't know god they're not born again they're not christians but they prefer to wait for marriage before they have sex they prefer to do things that maybe christians do but they don't do it because of faith or because of believing in jesus christ or believing in the word of god so sometimes it's just your personal choice but this guy is pressuring you so let me tell you something that real love does not force you to do things that is not love so first of all if he says that he wants to do this because he loves you you need to know that he's lying it's it's not real love it could be lust it, it could be infatuation but it's, it's definitely not love and the problem with building a relationship based on lust or infatuation is that lust and infatuation are not strong enough to withstand storms that come in relationships. Lust and infatuation are not 
powerful enough to withstand the pressures of life that come in relationships. This is why you find that people who went into a relationship based on lust and infatuation, as the relationship begins to grow and as the honeymoon phase, you know, goes away, then, you know, the reality comes in. You find that you're no longer attracted to that person. You don't really like their flaws anymore. You just, you know, just not into them. It's because it was never about love. It was about infatuation. It was about how they look. It was about the jokes that they make. It was about, you know, fictitious things and um, things that are not really substantial. It wasn't about the character. It wasn't really about the personality. Um, because, you know, anyone can be good looking. You know, there's a lot of good looking people in the world. So if you go in a relationship with somebody because they're good looking, I'm not saying I'm not saying that you shouldn't be attracted to somebody. It's very important that you're attracted to the person that you are in a relationship with. But it shouldn't be the base of the relationship because there's a lot of attractive people and you'll find somebody who's more attractive. So so the thing is, it's not really about love. It was about lust. And you don't want to build a relationship based on lust. So maybe asking, okay, so what do I do now? How do I avoid sleeping with him? Because he's pressuring me to sleep with him. Well... If you're a Christian watching this video, you have to take your life very seriously. Um, it's important that we take our lives very, very seriously. We take our tomorrow very, very seriously. Take your future seriously. And when you take your future seriously, you are not afraid to cut people off. You're not afraid to say no. You're not afraid to stop communicating with people for the sake of your future, for the sake of your tomorrow. And, um, you know, you might think, I really love him and I just don't know if I'll get anybody like him, anybody better than him. I don't know if I'll find anybody, you know, more loving and more funnier or more, um, you know, good looking or whatever. So you might be thinking you'll never find somebody like him, but it's not true. Um, if you really love yourself, then you need to be very careful about what you do. If you really love yourself, if you really respect yourself, if you really care about your tomorrow, you really care about your future, then you need to, to stop compromising yourself, your future, your tomorrow, your body for the sake of somebody who's pressuring you to do something you don't want to do, to do something that the Bible tells you not to do. So. I'll give you three things that you can do now. Um, first of all, if you have already said no to this person several times, then you need to do the next three things that I'm going to say to you. But if you haven't yet said no, it's very important that you do this. The Bible tells us to warn a divisive person once and then warn them twice. But if they don't listen, then have nothing to do with that person. But in context, it's speaking about arguments, about the law, you know, arguments about um, the word of God and things like that. But I give you that same advice today that if your boyfriend or the person you're dating, courting, in a relationship with, engaged to, if this person keeps pressuring you, warn them once that you're not willing to do that. Tell them no. I can't do that. I don't want to do that because my Father, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit forbid me to sleep with somebody before marriage. Show them the Bible, what it says. Show them the verse that sex before marriage is fornication. Show them the verse in the Bible and say that you have to abide by this verse to follow what the Word of God says. So warn them once. And then if they keep pressuring you again, warn them again the second time. If they don't listen the second time and yet they say that they love you, then you need to do one of these three things. And, you know, after this video, don't say that Daphne told us to break up with our boyfriends. It's not about that. It's just to give you options that you can do. Because to be honest, the decision is in your hands, so you can do whatever you like. I'm just going to give you these three options. So you've warned this person twice. Okay, they're not listening. One, you can end the relationship. It's up to you and the relationship because if you do continue in it, you are likely going to give in because, you know, sometimes people think that as women, we don't feel the way men feel. We do feel the way men feel. Um, we do want to do certain things. <laughs> you know, some of us do feel that way, but we are looking for somebody who can lead us in the right way. Somebody who's not going to take advantage of how we feel or take advantage of, you know, our hormones because our hormones can be raging some days. You just wake up at 4 a.m. and your hormones are raging and your flesh is speaking to you. So 
it's very important that we are with people who can lead us in the right way. As women, we are people that are very easily led because that's how we we're created. We we're created to be led and to be protected, um, etc., etc. So, one, end the relationship. Two, you can stop communicating. Or three, you can you can decrease the communication. So in terms of meeting up, or in terms of going to places where there's a lot of seclusion, or places where you are vulnerable. So you can decrease doing things like that, whereby he says, let's meet there. You can just say, uh, let's meet somewhere else. So it's just you using wisdom, because you know that if you are in this place where you are vulnerable, then you're likely going to give in to those raging hormones. You're likely going to give in to his pressure. So it's, it's about using wisdom and protecting yourself. So one, decrease the interaction or the meetups or the places that you generally meet up. Decrease that or change that. Two, you can completely stop communication. Or three, you can stop the relationship. So it depends on where you are today, how much the pressure is. It depends on your relationship. And um, if you were born again watching this video, then just pray about it. Just um, ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and direction on what to do. Yeah, that's really what, what, what I wanted to share with you. And I hope this video is very helpful to um, some of you today in your relationships. Make sure that you share it with a friend who's maybe experiencing the same thing. And I'll just be praying for you. If you're experiencing this um, and you just want me to pray for you, just let me know in the comment section and I'll dedicate a day where I just pray concerning this um, because maybe you need strength you need wisdom um, you need courage it's not easy to tell the person that you love and that you are very attracted to that you don't want to do this when you know in your flesh in your mind you want to but because you want to honor the word of God you also want to honor maybe your personal vows so it's not easy at all and um, just let me know and I'll just pray for you um, yeah so god bless you and i will see you again on monday when we pray i uh, hope you had a, you have a very good week a good weekend um yeah so take care bye grab a copy of my latest book incorruptible beauty on amazon Kindle and ibooks